Welcome back to the Extraordinary Technology Conference 2022. We are Friday evening and it's time to kind of let our hair down and have some good times. We got our good friend Marco Roden here today and he's going to be talking uh, for one session, which is a normal session for, what, an hour and 20 minutes? And then everybody's going to go to the social and we're going to come back and he's going to go till midnight. So get ready. I hope a bunch of you are going to stay for all the sessions because he's going to do some mind-blowing stuff. I had a chance to do a session just a while ago. It went a little over. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, it was fun. It was a little bit of prep for what's coming. And a couple quick announcements about Marco Roden. There's a new book out, and it is filled. Uh, let me put the mic down. It is filled with gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. Every page has a beautiful picture that exp expresses what's going on with the Roden coil. It's a, it's a coffee table, gorgeous book. And there are copies available, but not very many. The author, Karen Elkins, has them. She's not here. I told Marco I would go get her phone number. <laughs> so I'll get that if you'd like to have it. Book is not cheap. It's $150. But you can get it from, uh, if you'd like to call Karen, the author, and get it, let me know, and I'll, I'll have her phone number. I don't have it right this minute. Anyway, Marco Roden, I first met him in 2008 or 9, I don't remember, at this very conference. And we kind of hit it off and just started talking about stuff before that. I got a chance to, I, I actually went through, Marco had a series of videos, and I don't remember, was it like 15 hours long for the whole set? Something like that. And I watched every minute of it, and I called him, and I said, you got to talk to me about this. And we just, I don't know, we spent about four hours on the phone that first time. So then we got a chance to meet at the conference after that, and we've been friends ever since. Uh, a year later, I think it was, in 2010, uh, we... I, I guess I kind of wrote a paper and I gave credit to Marco on it and we co-presented it at the NPA conference. So we had a chance to do that together. And uh, he's been after me. He says, Greg, you, you know, what you did is really good. And he's always happy about the things I'm coming up with. But he says, you haven't figured it all out yet. There's more. There's always more. So uh, I think that's true. I really do. And uh, what I will say is this, and I said this in my earlier talk, was that... Uh, Marco, and, and he'll be the first to admit it, he's not a, a, a PhD level mathematician, but uh, he has more intuition than all, most of the, every PhD mathematician I've ever met. And, uh, and I would say that about John Cyril too. I mean, that's what they have in common. Is they just see things that other people just don't see. So that's what I ask, invite you to experience with us today. Marco has insights that are just mind blowing. And yet it's, you know, the, the basis of it all is very simple. And so I just invite you to enjoy uh, the wonderful world, if you will, of Marco Roden. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. It works. Um, you know about the laptop from hell? Well, this is the presentation from hell. Um, I have a question first, please. Dustin, are you in the audience somewhere who I was speaking with last night? Anywhere? Not here? Oh, okay. Can't do that. Um, who here speaks? Who here thinks they're very well rounded in quantum computing, in tensors, like 0, 0, 0, 0001? Uh, anybody here in quantum computing? Nobody. Well, in that case, I, I can tell you that I've invented the greatest com computer <laughs> in the world. <laughs> um, I have a presentation. It involves metaphysics, mysticism, religion. It involves numerology but it's not called numerology. It's called, compute, it's called decimal parity in computer science. Because any large number can be reduced to a discrete number. Um, <sighs> most of you are much better, well better educated than me, and certainly Greg Volk probably surpasses us all as far as his thoroughness and, and, and breadth of expansive knowledge. Um, so what I've been able to do is I've been able to combine arithmetic, 
which is considered almost a worthless science. We, it's primarily confined to business transactions, economics, and I've been able to combine it. It took 25 years. I, I, have, I made only two particular discoveries that are the pivotal ones. I had this funny VW symbol for 25 years using arithmetic in this symbol with a circle to turn it into the surface topology of a donut, which is called a hypersphere or a torus. I was able to put one number per one tile on this uh, torus. Um, never before in modern times, whatever I've accomplished has always existed and rediscovered and lost over and over again. It does not exist today in Western academia. Because what I have done is new today, I was able to get unbelievable peer review uh, from the director of Microsoft Advanced Operating System, Russell P. Blake, said that this is going to revolutionize all technology. Um, I really want to go into my, okay, so the name of my presentation tonight is fine-tuned primes. When the banks are closed, they, every night they do bank wire transfers in the billions of dollars, and they're prime encrypted. I destroy prime encryption. It's the basis of all economics today. Um, the reason it's called fine-tuned primes is because the patterns in primes that they are looking for are 2D, whereas what I discovered, no, I didn't discover it. And, you know, I'm going to mention his name. What Farron Thorpe discovered, I originally did the first toroid map base 10. Farron Thorpe did all the other base systems. Randy took it to into the, Randy Powell took it into the thousands of primes. Randy is my in-house mathematician, resident mathematician. And any prime number that you square turns from being 2D to a 3D torus. There's no way that you can imagine how hard it is and the skill it takes mentally to map the torus skin with a prime number squared. Where, um, what, Greg, what's the gentleman's name from MathLogger? Yeah, er, uh, something like that. Where he went wrong, where everybody's gone wrong, is they don't understand when you're dealing with 3D if it's not a prime squared, because everybody thinks there's infinite base number counting system. Not only do we use the binary for all our computers today, Apple uses it, the PC, Windows uses it. Um, they think you can transfer the binary code into hexadecimal or base 12 or, there is no base 12. It's one of the biggest misnomers. Yet 12 is critical because there's three parts each of 12 in my standard model, but I'm gonna not go into depth at this moment. I, I use a control based on 36. Divide into three parts, 12, 12, and 12. Two parts are real, physical. The third part is in the center of them, and it's a flex field. I know where, I know where that flex field is, when, and how to tap into it and to harness it. Um, so all computer science today believes that there's endless base number counting systems. That's not true. There's only a handful of base number counting systems. Because after base 10, which is the first true prime squared, which is 3, we all know 3 is a prime, the misnomer is a polite way of saying they got it dead wrong. They think 2 is a prime. It isn't. We standardize math so the teachers can communicate, so my peers can communicate. I have tremendous respect for them. If we didn't standardize our language, we wouldn't be, know what each other's saying. When we make a mistake, we correct it. Two is not a prime. 
The next prime after three, three makes mod nine base 10. I'm going to be showing you that the base 10 system has two circuits in it. They're the binary code and they go in opposite directions, same as the DNA double spiral helix with one huge difference. In the double spiral helix, this is a new word for you, the underpinning nested vortices, the micro vortices in DNA align. On the torus, they're staggered. These control the entire function of the major vortices and the torus. The top vortice is a negative vortex. It, it compresses or implodes. The bottom vortice decompresses or explodes, black hole to white hole. In DNA, the vortices align, the underpinning nested vortices, and they control mitosis. They control sister strand unraveling. They control all cellular communication. Because DNA is made out of phosphates, the backbone of DNA. And phosphates always have a negative electric charge. And of course, with any negative electric charge, there's always an associated magnetic field. Indisputed, undisputed. That higher dimensional flux field is nested in between the helixes in what is called the major groove of DNA. Just go to Google, type in DNA, the letters, major groove, go to images, and there's millions of them. On the outskirts of the backbone of DNA is the minor groove. I'm going to be explaining how to use the minor groove to create superconductivity by getting rid of all parasitics, all resistance. I claim to be able to get rid of entropy. I, I claim that I know the longest mean free pathway of least resistance, where there are no random collisions. I claim to get around the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, because that's based on using something invasive to look, look at the electron moment. Whereas I use numbers to create a mathematical interferometry. I'm not using anything invasive. So in the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, you can't know all three positions, past, present, future, simultaneously. But because I am not disturbing what I am observe, observing, because I have found the ideal. So I'm, I've created the touchstone, the control, from which then I'm starting with synthesis. I'm starting with the answer from which then it's applied to the question. I do everything backwards, everything reverse. That higher dimensional flux field in DNA is called the bioetheric template or the morphogenetic field means evolution is not random, haphazard, trial and error. It's not by chance. It means there's an all-coherent intelligence guiding evolution. I've literally been able to numerically map the mind of God. This archetypal numerical pattern can be translated into any mathematical language, and it has been. Russell Blake wrote the mathematical formulation of the rodent torus. It's over 70 pages in algebra. He volunteered to be a bridge between vortex-based mathematics and humanity by creating all this documentation, thousands of pages. Um, I'm past the point of peer review. The purpose of our talk tonight is to, to share through fine-tuned primes. I do not create a computer. I do not create a supercomputer. I, do, I create a hypercomputer, the world's first hypercomputer, where every mathematical function occurs simultaneously at once. Doesn't make sense. What, can, how, what kind of animal is it? 
where all, every known branch of math, every known mathematical calculation and function exists all in a single model. Of course, they call that the GUT equation. That's the acronym for the Grand Unified Field Theory. Okay. Um, this hypersphere I call the decocubit. I'm going to be using three examples. By giving you three examples, you can take it out as far out after that as you want. Then you know you can do the fourth example. The first prime example is going to be three. The second example, prime example is going to be, because three is the first true prime, is going to be five. The, the third example and final, unless you want to, someone here is brave enough to try and calculate it on their own, which is going to be seven. Randy Powell can do it in his head. The original discoverer, Baron Thorpe, can do it in his head. It's, it's a wonder to watch them. And they do it. Um, so in my goal to show the present day state of the art, which is the binary code, PC, Apple computer, Linux, whatever we have, we're used to how we do it today, I'm gonna obsolete that. And I'm because the first thing about the binary code is it looks like 2N. We call it the doubling circuit. It is not. That's just an optical illusion. It comes from bifurcation, by, being, by everything being split in half, by clefting. If I take my hand, and I have a knife in it, and I have a solid loaf of bread that hasn't been sliced, I have one action, but that one action creates two simultaneously half-opposite equal reactions, which are now two lows. It's not one opposite reaction. It's not for every action there's a single opposite reaction. Instead, everything is pierced and twain, cleft in half. It gives the aftermath, it gives the, um, I can't think of the word, uh, uh, artifact is what I'm looking for, the artifact of 2N. But I don't work in 2D. I work in 3D. Now, I will mention that all the dimensions above 3D are a, bowl, a cup of soup. They all fall into place, and they all work perfectly if you get your 3D right. If you leave the higher dimensions alone by just leaving a gap space, a displacement for them to focus and to occur in at the center, they all work perfectly. Essentially, the binary code is the residual artifact of the higher dimensions, called heaven, called the binary code earth, the material physical world creation, the binary code, the circuit. It's a, it's a uh, trough that the energy f it follows a, a bed, uh, a stream's bed. But the higher dimensional flux fields occur first and create the binary code. And the higher dimensional flux fields have a numerical pattern that always occurs with the binary code. And what I'm, I'm going to say now is that the binary code always comes in pairs. There is never one binary code. With primes, my team having cracked primes numbers are able to show the true 3D pattern of primes, because there is a pattern. So when you square three, you only have one pair of circuits. You'll soon know how they work. It's the numbers one, two, four, eight, seven, five, over and over again. One, two, four, eight, seven, five, one, two, four, eight, seven, five, one, two, four, eight, seven, five. But one of them goes to the right, and the other one goes to the left. And the one that goes to the right is positive one, negative two, positive four, negative eight, it looks like it's a duality, but it's trinary. You'll see it. It's shocking when you see that the whole duality is an optical illusion of three occurrences 
called family number groups, but by them inverting, they create Alice in Wonderland parity, mirror symmetry. Um, it's called, parity is a property of physics. Everything I'm going to be doing, all physical calculations using discrete numbers in a surface topology. I'm going to try and keep it easy. And it really is easy. Everything I do is child's play. I'm not kidding. Um, in 5 squared, mod 25, base 26, there is no base system between base 10 and base 26. None. Math logger, Earhart, thinks so. They're wrong. There's no base 15, because it has what are called fractures, rips and tears, because they have never been able to calculate mathematically on an x, y, z axis. The flux fields are on a fourth axis called the w axis. And that is literally the other world, the flux fields, flowing into our physical world. If those flux fields were taken away, this world would become instantly obliviated. Obliviation. It would become destitute and void. These flux fields emanate. We live in the kingdom of emanation. You can call these flux fields dark matter, dark energy, Higgins, um, tachyon, soliton, monopole. Um, there's so many other more names for it. Uh, Oregon, um, G, spirit. I like the term spirit. Spirit is unique, very unique, because everything that we have in our domain, which is our world, warps and curves, everything. It's like your relatives are coming over for dinner, commercial on TV, where they have a fish, fish uh, what's it called, a fish lens, a fish lens, and everything's warped, okay? There isn't anything that's not warped in our world. But spirit is not of the third dimension. It's perpendicular, it's tangential, it's orthogonal to the binary code. It causes this clefting of the binary code. And this spirit travels in a straight line. That's what's so unique about it. Irresistible, penetrates everything, it determines the pathway position, the future position of everything as it takes, as it is as impelled forward on, along its pathway. It determines the pathway that energy flows to as it moves into the future. So what happens is spirit is the source of all motion, vibration, and time. So the purpose of this talk tonight is to talk about a lot of new things. Sometimes I offend people because I treat spirit technically, which can be scary, frightens people. Um, I'm of the Baha'i faith. Um, I worship God, best I'm morally, humanly capable of. I certainly make my errors. Um, there's a reason why I have the answer or found the answer and everyone else didn't. And it's not because I'm so intelligent. It's because I have a good memory about religion. And I remembered when I was raised, I was raised in Hebrew school. And I was remembered that the church, supportive, that they, our congregation didn't have a location. And so I got to mix with the Christian other students. We all learned together, because uh, they shared their facility with us. Um, I remembered in Krishna, I remembered in Zoroastrianism, I remembered in, um, it turns out what I remembered was they had all these sacred holidays and they'd had the gyroscope, spinning, the top. They'd have blowing into the horn, the Seder. 
You all know these sacred observations. They're, they're, they're lost. They've become a cult <coughs> because they're hidden. What was their inner significance? We know that Gabriel is blowing in the trumpet when Christ returns, but hey, that's got to be a pretty big trumpet. It turns out that I have spent my life on studying linguistics. I am not a mathematician. I'm a, I study on phonetics. And it turns out that why I figured this out is because I knew my goal, I had a single goal, my single goal was to tap into the underutilized remaining potential that they say is 90% underutilized, not harnessed, capability of the brain. They say we only use 10%. These are only hypothetical. Maybe someone can find me a Kleenex, if you don't mind, please. I always forget to bring my own Kleenex. I've, I've broken my nose so many times that 